do you want to talk more about these or should we talk about now the, the public art? We stuff, talk about you? public art, talk yeah. About public yeah. Art. Uh, this is one of your wind sculptures. Yes. And there are, there are several of them here, I believe. Uh, why wind? And how do the sails of Nelson's ship correspond to this new iteration of your concern with movement, with tradition, as it uh, is displaced from one place to another? And the attempt, you know, we, we all, well, some of us of a certain age are familiar with this song, Catch the Wind, which was an impossible thing that su sort of. Um, communicated our aspiration for utopia at a much earlier, very yes. dim and distant point. But you're trying to catch the wind, and you seem actually to have succeeded in catching the motion of the wind in these in these sculptures. Do you wish to? to yes. To um, well, there are many issues surrounding uh, uh, public monuments, and also, you know, what is public sculpture? Uh, public sculpture, you know, traditionally, uh, it's usually a, a a male figure, uh, um, and um, and so what I wanted to do was to see if it's actually possible to sculpt nothing. So can we actually sculpt nothing? And so it's the impossible sculpture, and it's the opposite of sculpture, because um, and it's also a way of. And that work actually evolved after I did Nelson's Ship in a Bottle. Mm -hmm. And then I, I reduced it to the finite sails and the notion of actual, actually wind mm -hmm. and the metaphor of migration mm -hmm. and the wind and the sea. And, you know, so, and of course, you know, that's also linked to the diaspora, to the African diaspora. And so um, I, decided that I could actually, you know, try and do, try and do that. And that's, so th the idea of wanting to do that, uh, it's a reduction of the, the wind to its essence. But, the, but then it's embodied in this, um, you know, in this sculpture. I, I mean, I think that's a terribly interesting thing to have done. Yeah. At a moment where there's sort of political and ethical questions around public art in yes. general and sculpture in particular yes. have been so controversial. Yes. And where, you know, starting in South Africa with Cecil Rhodes and yes. in Oxford, yes. similar questions about what one does with these objects that yes. speak to a past that's to a moment that's gone and yet you know, in a sense it's a bit like the wonderful work Hugh Locke did in Bristol around the um, uh, the figure of Burke and the figure of yeah. Colston. Yes. How do we, is it possible for an artist to repurpose these things, to engage yeah. them differently so we don't lose them from our lives, yes. but we acknowledge the way in which they invite us to draw a new line between the past yes. and the present? Well, I don't, I personally, I don't think that those works uh, should be destroyed. I think that um, you cannot burn the books in the library that you do not like. Mm -hmm. um, history is history. I think that we can have education around them. And if they're rather offensive, we can put them in museums. Uh, but I don't think we should destroy them. And I think that we should, in fact, be creating our own monuments uh, to you know, express our own time. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think that alternative monuments are required, uh, and then the old monuments should be, you know, I mean, without a doubt, uh, particularly in the United States, you know, it's a very painful yes. history. Yes. And yes. so if you're constantly faced with, uh, um, you know, images of oppression, and you have to live with that, you know, that's rather difficult. But I think that other ways could be found, perhaps, you know, I think that's very much a local conversation. I mean, people would have to decide mm -hmm. what they would like to do. I wouldn't have one rule, of course. I mean, they would have to decide mm -hmm. what they would like to do with that monument. So as the uh, boundaries of the national state are contested in new ways, locality becomes, once again, the decisive question. And there are a number of different ecologies here. There's one in the States where yes. the memory, the unresolved memory of the tragedy of slavery is constantly yes. present. Yes. And a slightly more attenuated, a different one here where, as you've shown perhaps more than any other artist of recent years, how easy 
that history, however uncomfortable it may be, it's a very easy thing to recover and it's a very powerful thing to restage. Yes, I mean, you know, I think that um, it's, it's impossible to actually get away from the past. But you, you must, I mean, I find that it's also very important to, to acknowledge the present and not necessarily, the past might be painful, but I, I personal, personally don't want to wallow in it. Now, the reason I don't want to do that is I must acknowledge my agency. And there are various problems with the past, you know, there's a question, one you may be familiar with yourself, the issue of appropriation of cultures. You know, people using things from other people's culture. Now, my attitude to that, my attitude to this notion of appropriation, I think that my own agency is extremely important. So that then I assert my agency by appropriating Western culture and Western history. And I think that in the same way that Picasso was free to appropriate African culture, I'm also free to ethnicize Victoriana, to reappropriate Victoriana. So therefore, what I say to the issue of appropriation is that my agency needs to be recognized. Therefore, I have the freedom to steal from Western culture. I think I go further than you because I think misappropriation is the machinery of cultural life. So I, I don't know who wants to pronounce upon or police that particular machinery. Yeah, but you know fully well that in social media, um, the, you know, this is a very, this has been, um, excuse me, this has been a very um, lively. Yeah, yeah. it's been, been a very lively issue. Yes. And then people are kind of apologizing for using yes. uh, various imagery. Yes, no, I understand that, I suppose. But I think that one of the problems with, with social media and with the computer mediation of our movements and our aesthetic habits and our passions and our pleasures, culturally speaking, is that we're, we're drawn to the idea that we're all simultaneously everywhere. And, and what I took from what you were saying was that actually local factors were rather more important than... We're not all Americans, actually. We're not all in the United States. And we no. don't have um, to necessarily receive the apparatus of, of the, you know, the US... The export of racial Americana to the rest of the world is not an unalloyed uh, benefit to all of us. There are some good things about it. There are some bad things about it. No, I think context is very important. And I think that's, you know, because when I was at college, I mean, I encountered uh, the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And I also understand that it's very important history, but it's not necessarily my history. Right. And so then I had to, you know, uh, make the kind of work I thought was it's more, more, more yeah, suitable well, to I, my I, history. I wonder, I wonder then, I think the final slides really relate to the extraordinary project that you have underway in Lagos. And I wondered if, oh, if you felt... Oh, and I, I actually, I'd like to show, oh. because I'd like you all to see yes. my sculpture in Central Park. Ah, well, there it is. Uh, is there yeah. another image? So I just opened it last week. I'm still slightly jet lagged. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so this is a public art fund project in, in um, Central Park in New York. Um, you know, and it's a much bigger version. So it's the second generation of the wind sculptures. Right. And it's about seven meters tall. Uh, because I want public sculpture to be fun. Because politically, I feel that there are people who can't go into galleries, mm -hmm. who don't want to go into galleries, or, you know, but uh, they can actually. So, actually, in terms of access, you know, access in art, mm -hmm. I feel that public sculpture is a way to do that. So, there is actually a kind of a, a sort of a political thing there, too, uh, in terms of, the, you know, experience in the art. Well, yes, I suppose public tends to mean second, second is, 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 is about secondariness these days, isn't it? 
I mean, I think that the restoration of publicity and the, the work we have to do on the idea of public good, you know, all, all, all of this can, can contribute to that. I have a question about this, because I haven't had the pleasure of seeing this work yes. in Central Park. Does this have a sonic signature, this, this, uh, this work? Does it have a sound? No, no. There's no sound. Um, well, it's called, you know, it's another wind sculpture. Right. But obviously, you know, it's very hard material. It's fiberglass right. uh, with metal at the center and painted fiberglass. Right. But the challenge is to make something which is hard and heavy uh -huh. look light. Yes. Yes. Well, c can we turn? Finally, there. Oh, look, there's, a, there's another. Earlier yeah, so one. it's the same. It's, it's the, the same, same one. Yes, right. so just and taken so from a different, from a different, angle. different angle. Okay. And this is at the Doris C. Friedman Plaza, and the southeast entrance to Central Park. Yeah. It will be there for six months, so you must go and see it. Um, okay, so. Do you want to talk about painting now, or should we go to the? No, we the can stuff go. Around? We can go okay. to. Uh, there are things to be said about all of this. Now that we need a longer session for this, I'm afraid. Oh, actually, if you stop oh, there. Sure. So, if you are, there's a show now, at the Met in New York, Met Brewer, uh, in New York, mm -hmm. and it's a show about the. I think it's called, from about life or. Like life, like life, yeah. So, uh, and I've got my parody of a Dega mm -hmm. uh, ballerina. Uh, she's got a gun. So it's next to a Dega painting in that show. So another thing for you to do in New York. Yes. And one thing we were talking about earlier on was the importance really now of building intergenerational dialogues between practitioners of different generations, mm -hmm. building a different kind of conversation about the future of, of arts. And I know that that's something you've been very, very much involved in, both in London and in, in Lagos. Um, perhaps yes. we can... And so you're, you're talking about, let's see, your, we'll go. Your, sorry. Oh, I yeah, that's it, if you go back. This, right, OK. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, so I, in my studio, um, I've run a project space for you know a younger generation of artists for about 10 years. So we're going to celebrate 10 years this year. And we do, so it's all art forms, you know, dance, performance, um, um, and conversations and screenings. And it, <clears throat> pardon me. And so it's in Broadway Market um, in East London. And you know, artists send their proposals in, and then they get the, um, the space for a month. And because um, it's, it's very important, uh, you see, the art market has got big. And, you know, real estate in London is expensive. When I was a student, I, you know, we could take over squats. This was in the, in the 80s. And, you know, um, not that I'm encouraging squatting, but, um, um, you know, we did some of that. And, you know, you could, you could make work and just do lots of shows. And, you know, I don't know how the younger generation now, I don't know how they cope, you know, but I do my own tiny contribution by giving residency in my studio uh, for a month. And they have to, you know, I don't fund, I give them the space, but I don't fund the projects. They have to apply for their own funding. Some of them, you know, apply to the Arts Council, but, you know, they manage to get uh, money to do their projects. And I've had, you know, really fantastic shows there. Um, and now I want to look at um, international exchange. And so I acquired um, land in uh, Nigeria, uh, in Lagos, particularly. Shall I move forward? Yes. And so the plan. Where's the plan? It's at the end, isn't it? There we go. Yes. So the plan now is to build um, a residency space. But the residency space is going to be in two parts. So one hour from Lagos, there's a, there's a farm, like a 30-acre farm that uh, you know acquired the land to do that. And so the artists would be able to be 
in the capital, but they can also go, if they want quiet, go to the farm and work there. And so, well, I've got this kind of fantasy that uh, we would grow our own food and, and, and all that. But, uh, but, you know, on a more serious note, I, it's, this is more about international exchange. And there's a lot of, a lot of people are not quite aware of Africa, really. Um, they have all kinds of, you know, stories about Africa. They've not been there. So what I want to do is to put my own money into the infrastructure, but then collaborate with a, a number of institutions to actually bring artists there and to, so that artists can also uh, interact with local local artists. And, you know, Lagos is um, getting more and more um, energetic in the art world, quite vibrant. Uh, there's a new art fair, mm -hmm. and the younger artists are doing, you know, great things. So um, I wanted to be part of that, uh, um, you know, conversation. And, um, you know, I will only be able to host, um, well, in, in the Lagos place, you know, three artists at a time. Um, but on the farm, you know, maybe up to three or four. Um, so that all that is, we're going to break ground this year. And, you know, we'll see, see how it goes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Inka Shonimare. Um, please, everybody, show your appreciation. <laughs>